All right, guys, so we're back with a brand new video, and I'm going to show you guys how to get started with the YouTube Data API. Now, if you guys don't know what the YouTube Data API is, it basically allows us to search for YouTube videos, search for channels, search for comments, and a whole bunch of other things. We can use their API to get resources, and we can use those resources to build out applications however we want. Let's say, for example, we want to build some kind of YouTube search application where someone can type something in the text box, and it will return, uh, let's say, 25 results from that search result. Something like that. We can also search for comments and a bunch of other things. I would suggest you guys to look into the data API, do some research and read documentation. However, in this video, I want to show you guys how to actually get started with signing up for the API. It's actually very easy. All you need to do is make sure you have a Google account because for most APIs, they require authentication. And the reason why is because they don't want to allow people to use your API without any kind of authentication because it will enable people to abuse the API and a whole bunch of other things. So make sure you sign up for a Google account. Once you sign up for a Google account, you want to make sure you go over to the Google Developers Console. Okay. So you're going to see right over here that since this is a new account that I made, so I'm going to just click on I agree and it's going to go ahead and give us an empty dashboard it's because we don't have any projects. So I'm going to click on create a project and I'm just going to name this YouTube data API test. We're going to click on create. So it's going to take a couple seconds, but in the meantime, uh, yeah, basically all you have to do is just make sure you create a Google account. And then after you create a Google account, you're going to click on this link over here. I'm going to leave this specific link in the description and you guys can just follow these steps one by one. And then you're going to go over to the Google dev console and you want to basically obtain authorization credentials. So we have our project created already. Okay. So now we need to actually enable the API. So we're going to click on this button over here, enable APIs and services. Okay. And if you scroll through, you can see all of the different APIs that you can enable. There aren't only YouTube APIs. There are also APIs for Google Drive, Google Calendar, Gmail, Maps, a whole bunch of things. So you guys can play around with that. But some of these APIs do require you to, uh, I think, pay for. Some of them are completely free. So we're going to go ahead and click on YouTube Data API. And we're going to click Enable. And you can read a little bit about it too. But we're just going to click on Enable. So this is going to take a couple seconds. Now, one thing that I will mention is I'm not entirely sure if you need to have your payment credentials attached to your account because I just tried to make an API request without my payment at payment method attached onto my test account and it worked. So I'm not entirely sure, but we're going to go through and you guys should see that it should just work just fine. But if it doesn't, if it gives us like some kind of authorization error, that means we need to attach credentials. But I'm pretty sure we don't because the YouTube data API itself is already free, but we just have a limited usage. So over here, you can see that we have our API enabled. We then need to create credentials. Okay. So once we create these credentials, we can actually make requests on behalf of ourself. So it's going to ask us which API are we using. So I'm going to select YouTube data API and we're going to select web server because we're going to be calling the API from our Node.js application. So we're going to just click on public data and then we're going to click on this right over here and it's going to give us an API key. Okay. So before I even use this API key, let me actually go over to samples or resource reference, sorry. And I'm going to go over to search and I'm going to go to list. Now it's going to, I'm going to show you guys how this actually works. And I would recommend you guys to use this instead of making sample requests, because I don't think this actually uses up your quotas. Okay. Once you reach a certain amount of quota usage, it's going to limit you for the rest of the day. I think it's a, you only have, I think 10,000 quotas a day. Okay. And each request costs, I think 100 uh, units. You can read up on that, but I would suggest just using this just to play around with it. You're going to go over here. And you're going to type in snippet for part. And you can also pass in the channel ID too. Okay. So it'll search for a specific result from the channel ID, the event type, channel type, anything that you want to do. We have all of these filters that we can pass in. Okay. So for Q, we're going to just type in the weekend and you're going to see right down here. I'm going to just select API key. We're not using OAuth two, So just make sure you only have API key selected. And now you can see that we have a status code of 200 from the response. And we can see that we have a bunch of different uh, results. Okay. So that's a quick preview. You can play around with it again. Like I said, I don't think uh, this little playground over here will cost any uh, quotas or any units. So you should be fine. Um, anyways, but I'm going to show you guys how to actually call the API using the link. So if you look right over here, we actually have this formatted link. So technically you could just throw this inside curl and pass this in. 
Or you can even just put this in the browser and it'll work just fine. But I'm going to use something called Postman. Okay, so this is Postman. It allows us to make HTTP requests and a whole bunch of other things. We're going to make a GET request. Okay, and if you want, you can also use Axios as well. Or node fetch if you're using node. We're just going to copy this URL and replace the API key with ours. So I have my API key ready. So I'm going to go ahead and pass in this query string. So the query parameter is going to be part equals snippet and percent because we're going to have another uh, query parameter. I'm going to go ahead and type Q and we're going to type the weekend. And then I'm going to do ampersand key, paste in that key. Okay, and you're going to see that uh, it works just fine. You can see that. The API works just fine, and I did not need to attach any uh, payment details. So it should work just fine without any uh, payment info attached onto the Google API or attached to the Google Dev Console account. But you can see that we only have, let's see, how many results do we have? We have this items array, and you can see that we only have five results, but we can change that. I can go ahead and pass another query parameter. So inside Postman, I can either put this, put this inside key, and it'll format it for me, or I can just pass in ampersand, max results and you can also look at the playground over here and you can see all of the different filters that you can uh, use topic id type video type so if you want you can search for specific ones licenses video embeddable video duration um, a whole bunch of things you can also sort by a certain order publish before publish after let's see max results so we're going to go ahead and do i think by default it's five so we're going to go ahead and do let's do 25. Now, I think each result actually costs 100 units. I'm not entirely sure. I've tried looking at the documentation before. I got to double check, but just be very careful when you are searching for results. So you can see right over here, we have 25 results now. So you can see right over here, we have 25 results in our items array. And you can see this items array has all of our results. So you can see uh, we have the ID, snippet, date it was published, and you can see the weekend on vivo i think this itself is a channel it should give you some kind of yeah it says kind and this is a youtube channel okay and you look over here kind youtube search result and you can see over here this is a uh, search result and what does it say the official youtube channel and you can see the id is a channel right over here same thing this is a video you can see the video over here you can see the date it was published at and yeah you could do a whole bunch of things with all of this data. So if you start to imagine what can I do with this, well, you can probably send this to the front end and render all of these uh, different uh, video data so that the user can you know, click on the link or something. You can send it to uh, some kind of other server. Anything that you can think of, you can do with this API. Now, obviously, if, when it comes to more complex things such as uploading videos or posting comments, those actions are going to require, I think, OAuth 2. I'm not entirely sure. I got to do more research on that. I just wanted to show you guys how to get started on using this API uh, just from scratch. Again, I highly recommend you download Postman. It's a very, very awesome program. You can just go to postman.com, okay? And it allows you to pretty much make uh, API requests, okay? You can also do automated testing. Uh, it's very useful, but if you don't wanna download Postman, you can just simply do this. You can just simply copy this, paste this in your browser, just like this, okay? See how it's pasted in the browser? And you can just get the results just like that. But again, I highly recommend downloading Postman though. Or you can use uh, Axios or Fetch, but in the next video, I'm actually gonna show you guys how to interact with the YouTube data API using the Google API's client. We're gonna go ahead and install that with NPM and it's gonna be lots of fun. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.